when you come for Omega, we don't teach you 10 steps, we don't teach you 7 steps, we teach you 1 step in the year that King Uzziah died. <laughs> Something must die so that there can be restoration. Something must go down so that there can be restoration. Child of God, listen to me. You need holy insanity, spiritual rascality, Holy Ghost brutality, no nonsensity. You jam me, you die. You jam me, you scatter. You monitor me. I professor anyone holding your testimony they release it and if you're ever in the houston area would like to invite you to our live sunday service we we'll promise we'll make you feel right at home proverbs chapter number eight examine from verse number 22 it said the lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways before his works of old i was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was and when there was no depth i was brought forth when there was no fountains abounding with water before the mountains were settled, before the hills were brought forth, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. Then I was by him, as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth my delight was with the sons of men i'm going to talk to you tonight about the spirit advantage there is an advantage system established in the earth as a matter of fact this system of advantage was established ever before the earth was created. Ever before the heavens were formed. Ever before the mountains were settled. Ever before the hills were brought forth. This system of advantage precedes creation. As early as Genesis chapter number 1 we are already seeing the profound ministry of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And you know the story. The earth was without form and void. And there was darkness upon the face of the deep. Now the next thing we see. The Bible says and the spirit of God. Tell us about the spirit of God. We find a problem already at creation. Now before God gets to work. He backs up. And the Bible says, and the spirit of God begins to hover over the situation. Right from Genesis chapter number 1 in verse number 3. We are seeing the acts of the Holy Ghost. Verse number 2. It says, and the Holy Ghost began to incubate the whole, the, the earth. Now, if we are seeing the, 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 the advantage of the spirit from the very beginning, that begins to set a precedent. To let you know that everything in life, if you and I are going to do anything in life, we must subscribe to the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Because if our Father, God in heaven, is unable to act until the Holy Ghost first comes into the situation, neither, neither can you or, or I. When you read further in John 5 and 30, Jesus Christ says profoundly, he says, on my own, I can do nothing. On my own. Now, this is Jesus Christ telling us profoundly, on my own, I can do absolutely nothing. Paul tells us further in Philippians 4 and 13, he says, I can do all things through whom? Through Christ.
Christ. Now, you must understand the advantage that God has given to us by the Spirit of God. The entire book of Proverbs chapter number 8 speaks about the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, does wisdom not cry? Time will fail me to exegete what wisdom is, but just understand plainly that wisdom is the Holy Ghost. Tell us about the Holy Ghost. It said, does wisdom not cry? And understanding put forth her voice. There is a cry of the Spirit. It says, she standeth at the top of the high places. By the way places of the path, there is a desperation in this cry. Trying to get your attention at all costs. He is everywhere possible so you can find him and not miss him. The Holy Ghost is trying to get your attention. There is a cry of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost, he says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Look at verse 4. Come on now. Verse 4. The Bible says, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice to the sons of men. My goodness, listen to me. Of everything that God created, no wonder the psalmist said, when I consider the heavens, the work of your hand, the sun, the moon, the mountains, the ocean. He said, what is man that you visited him? Why is man so important to God? Listen to me. The affection of almighty God is not on the scenery, on the mountains, or the ocean. The affection of the almighty God is upon you, O son of man. See, I'm valuable to God. I'm valuable to him. You know that saying, God don't need us? Huh? You know that saying, God don't need us? Have you heard it? Have you ever people say, it's nice, right? Okay, <laughs> let me ask you a question. How many of you have children and you say, this one, mm -mm, I don't need this one? Have you not heard it? You know, God don't need you. You need him. He don't need you. Have you it's nice, right? Let me ask you a question. How many of you have children and you say, hmm, this one, hmm, I don't need you. If you like, go out, don't come home. Huh? How many of you? Talk to me, how many of you? Now, Jesus Christ said, if you wicked men, sinful men, know how to give good gift to your children, how much more? Tell somebody how much more. How much more our Father in heaven? So in other words, if you place so much love and affection on your children, despite the fact that they drive you nuts, how much more? Tell somebody how much more. With your bad self. Ain't that good? Tell somebody how much more. Unto you, all sons of men, do I call. There are many people they don't even know if there be any Holy Ghost. They don't know. They don't know. They think he's a bird. Have you not read in the book of Acts chapter number 19? You've not, you've not read it? Acts 19 and verse number 1. The Bible said Paul was passing through a certain place and he met certain believers and he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And the Bible says, and they looked at him, sir, what is Holy Ghost? Look at it. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said to him, we have not so much as head. If there be any Holy Ghost. What is Holy Ghost? Ghost. Holy. I don't understand. How can Ghost be holy? These were men. They were believers. He said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, excuse, what's Holy Ghost? Paul said, who is your pastor? What church do you attend? They said, hey, look, I'm not making it up. That's what Paul said. Paul said, who is your pastor? <laughs> what church do you attend? They said, hey, no. He said, no, we attend. Our, our pastor, his name is John the Baptist. I'm not making it up. Read, look. <laughs> look at the verse number three. <laughs> verse number three. <laughs> and Paul said, who is your pastor? He said, our pastor is John. John. Our pastor is John, John the Baptist. He said, come on now. I know John. He's a firebrand. Did he not teach you? Look, next verse. I'm not making it up. Look at verse 4. And Paul 
Paul said, I'm not John. We are from the same fiber. <laughs> he said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that you should believe. Ah, that you should believe on him that is on Jesus Christ. In verse number five, verse five says, Verse 5 says, it says, when they had heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when John came preaching in Luke chapter number 3 and 16, don't go there. The Bible says, John said, there is one coming mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not able to unlash. It is he that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost, tell somebody, and with fire. Oh yes. The Bible says, and so they believed. And the Bible says in verse number 6, and Paul laid hands on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost and power fell on them. They were full of the Holy Ghost. They speak in tongues and they prophesy. One moment they are saying, who is Holy Ghost? The next moment they are full of the Holy Ghost. My goodness. Nothing can change a man like the Holy Ghost. What Jesus Christ could not do with Peter, James, and John, and all the 12 rascals for three and a half years. One moment with the Holy Ghost, these men were, they were, they turned Jerusalem upside down. Three years eating with them, sleeping on the same room. On the eve of crucifixion, all of them, poof, they, 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 they went, they, they ran. All they had, all this while was emotions. Jesus, ride or die. We will follow you. Who is eh? Peter said, me, ride or die. Three years, all they had was air. Eh. There's somebody air. Eh. All they had was just air. Eh. Empty symbols. When affliction came, they had no Holy Ghost. Peter, bishop, he was swearing in front of a little girl. He said, you are with him. Peter said, who? Him. I have never seen this man. Five minutes later, another little girl. Satan is a mini devil. <laughs> Very mean. He said, I know you. I used to see you with him. He said, hey, who sent you? I have never met this man. Sir, it is not because Peter hated Jesus. No, sir. No, sir. Peter loved him. But listen to me. It is the Holy Ghost that will make us abide in this end time. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, no matter how much you are, you know, oh, you know, you are, you are the, uh, at the, at the face of adversity, what we are about to encounter in this end time, many will, 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 will lose their faith because of fear of what is about to come. It takes the Holy Ghost to put your money where your mouth is. Are you hearing me now? What Peter could not do after three and a half years walking every day with Jesus beholding miracles. Peter was there when Lazarus was raised. He was there when he fed 5,000 with, with five loaves of bread and two fishes. He saw these miracles. But at the end of the day, he had no roots in himself. It is the Holy Ghost that makes us abide in faith. Otherwise, if you don't have the Holy Ghost in you, you will find your life Every so often we need to wind you. You are not in church. Pastor, I, I just picked up some, some shift lately. So now your, your, your Christianity is, it, there is a wave. One moment you are hot. Next moment you are cold. There is no Holy Ghost in you. The Holy Ghost is the spirit that makes us abide. Tell someone, say the Holy Ghost is the spirit that makes us abide continually. When the Holy Ghost came, the Bible said the same Peter denied Jesus in front of a little girl. Little girl. When the Holy Ghost came, it was the Sahindrins. Are you hearing me now? Uh, no, no, this is not normal. This is, this is not little girl now. It was the Sahindrins, the Pharisees. 
The men I'm talking about. Imagine, God forbid now, God forbid, you are standing before the judges of America. Huh? Those guys in the Supreme Court and they are asking you questions. The man that could not defend his faith in front of a little girl. The Bible says he stood in front of men. And they said to him, deny this Jesus. He said to him, he says, whom, he says, he says, he says, whom shall we obey? You? You? Do we obey you? Or do we obey God? They said, we'll kill you. Say we are dead men. At the end of the day, all the disciples were martyred. Peter himself, when he came to the time when they're going to martyr him, I'm talking about execute him, they were going to crucify him like Jesus. He says, no, I am not worthy to die like him. Crucify me upside down. The same G Peter that denied Jesus in front of a little girl. After the Holy Ghost came, he says, I am not worthy to die like my master. Crucify me upside down. Are you hearing me, church? Isaiah the prophet, when they were going to martyr him, they flipped him upside down and they took a wooden saw. Not iron saw, a wooden saw. They sawed him in half. And all the while they are singing, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. These men give their back to be beaten. No wonder the book of Hebrews says, this men of whom the word is not worthy. The word is not worthy of them. Tell us about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Somebody being blessed. Proverbs chapter number 8. Let's continue. The Bible says, My God, Malaba Shatabaha. Proverbs 8. We were in what? Verse what? Hey, 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 hey. Verse number 5, right? Was it 5? Verse 6 now. 8 and 6. Fly with me, media. Mm. <laughs> Oof. It says, here, for I speak of excellent things. Come here, son. It says, for I speak of excellent things, and the opening of my mouth shall be the right things. Look at the next verse, verse number seven. It says, my mouth shall speak the truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Look at verse number eight. He said, the words of my mouth are righteousness. There is nothing for or perverse in them. Look at number nine. He said, ah, they are all plain to him that understand. Look at verse number 10. We are going somewhere now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Receive my instruction, not silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. Look at 11. 11 says, he says, for wisdom. What is wisdom? What is wisdom? The Holy Spirit is better than rubies. All the things that can be desired cannot be compared to it. In other words, there is nothing you can sustain in this life that can ever equate the Holy Ghost. All your gettings, your gains in this earth. Look at verse number 12. Verse 12, he says, I wisdom, I dwell with prudence. I wisdom, I dwell with prudence and I find out knowledge of witty inventions. Do you know what this is talking about? The Holy Ghost says, I am prudence. I find out knowledge of witty inventions. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, that the microphone I'm using to talk now is a witty invention? The fact that you can hear me from you, wherever you are watching from, around the nations of the earth, is a witty invention. The Holy Ghost says, I am the author of witty inventions. What does this mean? The Holy Ghost knows 5,000 ways to bring you out of trouble while you are trying to figure out one. 
He has a thousand ways to make your life turn out right while you are confused about the next step to take for your future. Tell some of the witty inventions. Listen to me. When we speak of witty inventions, we are talking about the people of Israel standing by the Red Sea, have no way to cross the Red Sea. There is no boat, no life right. And yet the Holy Ghost tells them, move forward. And the Bible says, as they go forward, the sea divided hither and thither. Tell somebody witty inventions. 5,000 men, no food, no water. And the Lord says, all I need is five loaves of bread and two fishes. Make them sit down in group of fifties. The Bible says, and the author, the witty inventor, the Bible says he broke 5,000 men. Make them eat out of five loaves of bread and two fishes. This is a witty invention. It's a witty invention. Why you are confused about what step to take, he has already determined the end. There is no confusion in him. He said, I wisdom, I dwell with prudence. My goodness, there is no confusion in your life when it comes to the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. Tell us some of the witty inventions. Oh. Ah. Do, do you understand what I'm telling you? Witty inventions. Witty inventions. There are things concerning your life that may perplex you now. You are wondering, oh God, how will this thing turn? Oh Lord, what shall be the end of this thing? And the Holy Ghost said, not with me. Mary said, how can these things be since I know not a man? And the Bible says, and the angel said in John chapter number 1, in Luke 1, in verse number 33, uh, Mary said to him, he said, how can these things be since I know not a man? And the Bible says, ah, and the angel said to him, uh, Luke 2 and 33, Luke 2 and 33. He says, how can these things be since I know not a man? The Bible says, and the Lord said, the power of the Holy Ghost. Tell someone the power of the Holy Ghost. Ah, the power of the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. My God. Balabos kapaha. Elebraha, Luke 1 34. Sorry, Luke 1 34. He said, The power of the Most High, my God. Hey, he said, the Mary said to the angel, How shall these things be since I know not a man? In verse 35, and the Bible says, And the angel said to him, The power, he said, Behold, my goodness. He says, And the angel said to him, The power, the Holy Ghost, shall come upon you. A virgin woman conceived by the witty invention of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Sometimes we read our Bible too fast. There are some things in the Bible we need to just sit and just wonder. We just sit and just wonder. How can a woman hmm. Hallelujah. He says in verse number 13 Proverbs 8 and 13. My God. Look at verse number 14. Verse 14. Proverbs 8 and 14. Continue now. He said, counsel is mine. Oh my God. Tell somebody counsel is mine. Who has counsel? The Holy Ghost. He is called the spirit of counsel. You know what Isaiah calls him? Isaiah calls him wonderful counselor. Do you understand what the Bible means when it says wonderful counselor? In those days, when Absalom was going to overthrow the throne of David, despite his military might and the men he had with him, he needed a counselor. Oh my God. He had to hire a man by the name of Ahitophel. And the Bible says in those days when Ahitophel gave counsel, it was as though a man just heard from God. Ahitophel's counsel was wonderful. If Ahitophel counseled you, you can't fail. Ahitophel? No. If Ahitophel advised you, <laughs> the strength of David was his counselor. His counselors. He had them all around him. And now the Bible says counsel is mine. never fail. Lord, these people are not prophetic. They are not prophetic. I reach Arahoa. I can never fail. Can never fail. I can't fail. How? How? I can 
never fail. Never fail. Not by my mind. Not by my power. I rely on the Holy Ghost. Imagine. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, when you have a wonderful counsel at your side, how do you end up in a wrong marriage? I'm trying to bring it home to you. Eh? You have a wonderful counselor at your side. How do you end up in the wrong marriage? No, sir. Eh? No. He, listen to me. It doesn't matter how fine he is. Oh, he just has a nice baby daddy here. It makes no difference. Ah! Something in you. Your head says, ah, he's fine. But something inside says, mm, I the Lord. Look at not as man, for man see it on the outward proclivity, but I, the Lord, see at the heart. You like his nice baby daddy here, but his heart, his heart, you don't see it. Wrong from this man. Ah, tell somebody, wonderful counselor. Listen to me. He is our advantage in this life. Are you hearing me, church? We have an advantage. Child of God, have you ever, you know, Come, you, you know, you come from down from the, from the airplane or you're about to board your flight. There is this thing on the side. You know, they call it a, an escalator, right? You know, that one on the, on the ground. It's an advantage system. You can just get on that thing and choose to just stand still or choose to walk. Anything you do on that thing, it puts you faster than somebody who is just... Wah, 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 wah. Huh? They are sweating. They are moving. But at the end of the day, you are just there, probably on your phone. Something is moving you. Tell somebody advantage system. The Holy Ghost, sir, are you a businessman? You have an advantage system. Are you a student, sir? You have an advantage system. No wonder the spirit cries. He said, listen to me. This your human calculation and effort. When Jesus rose from the dead, the disciples were eager. They said, oh master, we are so sorry. We didn't know any better. That's why we ran and we abandoned you. And the Bible says, let us run now. Now that you have risen from the dead, we know. We, let us run. Jesus says, calm down. Luke 24 and 49. He said, Carry here until you be endued with power from on high. You need something to move you. Something must possess you. Tell somebody, Lord, possess me with your power. I send you the promise of my father. Tarry here. Don't go anywhere. I know you are emotional. I know you can't wait to run. Calm down. Calm down. The Bible says, and they tarried in one place. Fifty days later, on the day of Pentecost, they were in one place, in one accord. And then suddenly, there came a wind, a sound from heaven, like of the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and filled the room where they were sitting, and they appeared upon their head, cloven tongues as of fire sat upon them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. That was the day this men they changed everything about them. Peter that wanted to go back a fishing. This man said I'm going back a preaching. Are you hearing me church? Something must enter you. Nothing changes a man's outlook. Listen to me. Nothing can change a Mary Magdalene to becoming an evangelist like the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me now? No, listen to me. He may wear tattoo, wear muscle t-shirt. He looks like somebody who is a thug. Let him receive the Holy Ghost. And you will see out of that thug man, out of that man wearing tattoos, there can come a prophet. Are you hearing me church? Out of that woman that is dropping it down like his heart, smoking she, she running from men to men. Out of that, let her receive the Holy Ghost. You will see a woman on fire. Am I talking to somebody now? Say, Lord, I need the Holy Ghost. Oh, sir. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. He can make something out of nothing. But 
by my spirit. Oh, Father, may we know what this word means. I know we quote it. I know we say it. By my spirit, saith the Lord. I know, I know, I know we know where it is in the Bible. I know we can quote it, but Father, may we understand what you said when you meant, what you meant when you said by my spirit. By my spirit. Not by your resume. Say by my spirit. Not by my mental prowess. Not by my mental sagacity. Not by my credit. By my spirit. Nothing humbles you. Like when you know it was, it was not your resume. Oh no, no, no. Nothing humbles you. Like when you know it is not your power. It is the Holy Ghost. You know somebody say, oh you sang so beautifully. And you say, oh thank you. Thank you. May God reveal this thing to you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody say you sang well. I say, oh, thank you. Really? Oh, that was a beautiful message. Thank you. Are you sure? I give God praise. Oh, that was a wonderful song. It blessed me. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Holy Spirit, help us. There is a cry of the spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, I am telling you, I am not telling you something that is far-fetched from me. I'm talking about a current state in my life. Right this moment, I am going back. Last week, we, we, we talked about the secret place. Are we talking, right? I am going back. Lord, who is the Holy Ghost? I don't want to preach who I don't know. I don't want to talk about who I don't know. I want to talk about someone I know. I want to know him. Paul said, I have been preaching this thing. I have been preaching it. I can quote it. But he came to a point and said, that I may know him. Not as though I have already attained. I'm not there yet. I want to know him. Who is the Holy Ghost? Why did Jesus depend on this Holy Ghost so much? Why? Why? Sir, if we are ever going to make it in life and not fall into the trap that life will throw at you, sir, we need to slow down and say, who is the Holy Ghost? If you want to know who the Holy Ghost is, go and read the book of Esther. Esther chapter 1, Esther chapter number 2. You will know who the Holy Ghost is. It was the Holy Ghost that came in the person of, 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 of Haggai. Tell somebody Haggai. Had it not been for Haggai, Esther, in all her beauty, we never have seen the king. Because all the women came, and they came with their beauty. The Bible says whatever they wanted to wear was given to them. So guess what? They had an unlimited American Express. So they wore skeletos. They wore bone straight. How their face did, mascara done, gown flowing, tiara, everything nice. They thought when they get there, my goodness, once the king see my skirt all torn here, slay queen. All the beauty pageant. Imagine they were, imagine, imagine you know a beauty pageant and the king says, whoever I choose, once I choose, pageant over. So now everybody's competing for number one. Let me go first. Person number one gets there. Must have been from whatever country. Just knocked on the door. Click, click, click. Open the door. She just dropped something on the floor. The king said, what is this? <laughs> the 
king just rang the bell. Ting, ting, please. <laughs> Next. You don't like? You don't like? You don't like? You don't like? No, I don't like. Pass, pass, pass. I don't like pass. Ah, so the other one comes now. The other one comes in and says, ah, maybe the color didn't work. So she goes now and she, she takes the bone straight away and she now makes, you know, make it in real tight. Eh? <laughs> this one was not wearing, was not wearing any skirt. She, was, she just wore maybe a, a, a bikini. When she got there, she was all lotioned up. Greased from head to toe. All of them acted drama from start to finish. King said, hey, what is this? Who made me send Vashti away? I should have just let Vashti. This drama is too much. Twelve months I've been waiting for them. Twelve months. It took 12 months for this beauty pageant. 12 months. For them to see the king. After 12 months, drama. This drama, at least Vashti was okay. I was drunk. Now me make a mistake. At the end of the day, the Bible says in Esther 2 and verse number 10, it says when it was time for Esther, Ayanama, Holy Ghost, <sighs> Lay hands on you and say, Lord, I don't want to miss my destiny. The Bible says, and when the turn of Esther came, Esther 2 and 15, he says, when the turn of Esther came, Esther did not ask for anything. He didn't say, give me Louis Vuitton. He didn't say, give me red bottom heels. He didn't say, give me bone straight. He asked the king's eunuch. You are the one that enters the king's chamber. You know the king's secret. You know the inner chambers. You know how he likes his coffee. Whether black or with cream. You know whether two sugars or three sugars. You know his favorite color. Sir, what do you think I should wear? Ha! The Bible says... When Hegiah saw this one, he said, Ah, ah, Yalamanda, sir. No wonder the Bible says, He said, He that heareth my voice ah, obtains favor. My goodness, nothing brings favor into your life like when you embrace the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me, church? All of this working at Walmart, time and a half, three jobs and a half. Don't have time for church because you are trying to hit that. Ah, my goodness, I would talk God. You can have time with the Holy Ghost. Let him straighten your life so that you don't end up the way your grandfather ended. So you don't make the errors your grandmother made. Are you hearing me? Bible says she required nothing. Hey! Oh! She required nothing. They took her to Nordstrom. I don't want nothing here. They took her to Louis Vuitton. Nothing here. They carried her to Versace. Nothing here. The Bible says all she wanted was what? What he got, the king's eunuch appointed to her. And the Bible says, and when Esther, you know what is shocking? The Bible never told us what Esther wore. But all we know, when Esther got there, king said, beauty pageant over. As Esther came, whether it was her smile, or her good morning. Or the way she opened the door. We don't know. But because the Holy Ghost. Had prepared her. It was impossible. For her to fail. I can't fail. I can't fail. I can't fail. Kwanana. I can't fail. I can't fail. I can't fail. I can't fail.
one thing. I have the Holy Ghost. He's my advantage. I will not fall in the tricks of life. Blessed is the man that lean not in his own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. I can't fail. No, sir. I can't fail. I have the counselor. Not a counselor. Wonderful counselor. Ha! I can go to sleep. The wonderful. Do you know how we speak in tongues like we do? When we speak in tongues, we are tapping into councils. Are you hearing me? There are councils that can turn your life around. Are you listening to me? There are councils that can open up the next 20 years of your life. When we speak in tongues, we are tapping into spiritual counsel. <laughs> are you hearing me? Counsel. Counsel is like a well of water. You need a, 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 a pail. What they call that thing? A pitcher, a bucket to cast into that thing and draw up water. The Bible says counsel is like a well of water deep inside. A man of understanding tapped the water out. There is counsel for your next level inside of you. Are you hearing me? There is counsel for your tomorrow inside of you. No wonder Jesus said the kingdom is inside of you. All the time you spend watching Netflix, I would to God you can unsubscribe for the next three months so you can subscribe to the Holy Ghost. I don't know where that came from, but it sounded good. Hey! Oh my goodness. I don't know where it came from. Unsubscribe from Netflix and subscribe to the Holy Ghost. That fourteen ninety five, put it as offering for that ninety days. What you couldn't get three months with Netflix. May this not just be an entertainment for you. May this drive you. Listen to me. Our fellowship is with the Holy Ghost. When we are in fellowship with the Holy Ghost, we are not binding demons. If you remove prayer against altar, binding demons, killing strong man, if you remove that from the prayer of many, they are prayer we go to minus two. Eh? There will be nothing left. What people call prayer life, my father, wherever demons are gathered, Holy Ghost, any man calling my name before a shrine, Holy Ghost, the Goliath in my father's house, Holy Ghost, sir, when you remove all of those from their prayer life, nothing is left. So now there is no investment that can help them. Because all their prayer, which die, strong man die, jump and pass. There is nothing left. There is no time of prayer where they are tapping into councils, my Lord. That is why you must speak in tongues. Are you hearing me now? Because it is true speaking in tongues. The Bible says when you read in 1 Corinthians 2 and 1, Paul said, and I, brethren, when I came to you with the testimony of God, he said, I, my, my, I came declaring to you the testimony of God. He said in verse number two, he said, my, the, I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in fear and witness and much trembling. My speech and my teaching was not in enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power of God so that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man but in the power of God but how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect not the wisdom of this world not the prince of this world that come to naught we speak the wisdom of God tell us when the mystery oh yes even the hidden wisdom which God had before the foundation
foundation of the world ordained for our glory said this wisdom none of the prince of this world knew it for had they known it they never would have crucified the lord of glory as it is written eyes have not seen ears have not heard it has not entered the heart of man what things god has prepared for them that love him now watch it he said god has prepared this thing he said for the spirit searches all things yea the deep things of god the spirit of god is like the google of god he searches all things yea the deep things of god for what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man that in him even so the things of God knows no man except the spirit of God he said now we have not received the spirit of this world but we have received the spirit of God that we may know the things that has been given to us these things we speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but in words which the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things to spiritual things he said for the natural man cannot receive the things of God need how can he know it are you hearing me now because they are foolishness to him he said but he that is spiritual descended all he judges all tell somebody be spiritual the spirit of God searches all things yea he sounds the depths of God for our lives. Oh, you know that time you wake up between the hours of 12 to 4 a.m. and you are just there. You are just there. Yata da ba de le sufra in kaba. Eli etu sabananga disco pa. I would to God you know what you were doing. I would to God. Baraha disco pa. The Bible says we speak these things not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but in words which the Holy Ghost regadebede. Ikupa atamanda. When we speak in tongues, in second in first Corinthians 14, in verse number one, the Bible says, He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man for no man understands him he said but how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries tell some of the mysteries so when we begin to speak in tongues we delve in the realm of mystery because life is a mystery i don't know the way to go i don't know the step to take but the bible says in romans chapter number 8 and verse 26 the bible says for we know not what to pray for us we ought but the spirit of god the bible says he helped our infirmity. The Bible says he that searches the plans of God, he makes intercessions for us according to the will of God. And in verse 28 he says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. So which means as I pray and I speak in tongues, when I'm done praying, when I get up out of my prayer life, anything I see is for my good. Are you hearing me church? When you spend time in the prayer closet, no matter what comes your way, it is for your good. Tell somebody pray. Tell somebody pray. Not the prayers you are praying binding devils. Learn to spend time speaking in tongues in your closet. When was the last time you shut yourself in your room? One hour, two hour, you wasn't binding the devil. You wasn't praying for a job. You were just speaking in tongues for the past one hour and 30 minutes. You have not said one word in English. Are you hearing me now? Child of God, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. You want to know the ministry of the Holy Ghost? Speak in Speaking tongues. Nothing opens up the ministry of this counselor like when we speak in tongues. Whew. We can't we can't finish this in one day. It's just too much. Oh God. Proverbs chapter number eight. We'll just fly through it. We'll pick it up next week. The Bible says, counsel is mine. Verse 14. He said, counsel is mine. Oh God. Oh God. Can it get any better? Can it get any better? Can it get any better? 
Look at verse 15. It says, by me. Ah, by me. Kings reign. Do we have kings in here? By me. Kings reign. By me. No wonder David said, by my God, I run through troops. By my God, I leap over wall. There are some statements that men make in the Bible that opens up so much for you to understand. Have you ever read in Job 29 and verse number 1? The Bible says, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. And it says, and Job continued a promise. Look at verse number 2. Verse number 2. He said, oh, in the months past, in the days when God preserved me. Look at verse 3. He said, hey, by his candle, when his candle was upon my head and by his light, I walked through darkness. In the next verse, verse 4, he says, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God was where? Upon my tabernacle. Tell us one the secrets of God. These are the secrets of God. What is the secret of God? The Bible says in Isaiah 40 and 29, have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he is neither faint nor is he weary. There is no searching to his understanding. He giveth strength to the strength to the weak. And them that have no might, he increaseth some strength. He said, they, he said, the young may fall, the youth may utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. The secret of the almighty is waiting on the Holy Ghost. This is the secret of the almighty. That is why at creation, he does not say a word. He backs up, waits for the Holy Ghost to act. He waited for the Holy Ghost to finish his work. And when the Holy Ghost was done, then he comes in, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. The Holy Ghost has already paved the way. Ah. Oh. By me, kings reign. Tell us somebody I'm a king. In verse 17, I love them that love me. Them that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit are better than gold. Ha! Ah, look at verse number 21. Oh my God. He said that I may cause them that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasure. Now look at now in verse number 22. He said the Lord possessed me. The Lord possessed me. You know, you know what possess means? It means to seize by force. He didn't say the Lord hired me. The Lord possessed me. You know somebody say, are you possessed? <laughs> no, when they act very, very, very funny. It was. They act like you are possessed. <laughs> you know, what's, what's wrong with you? Are you possessed? He said the Lord possessed me. How? Holy Ghost possessed me. Possess me. Sir, this is why we spend time in prayer. Father, as I go out today, possess me. Are you going to do this tonight? Will you do this tonight? Between the hours of 12 and 4. Wake up for one hour. Holy Ghost, possess me. Ah! Wake up tonight. Between the hours of 12 and 4. Choose one hour. Father possess me. Yakatapaya. Iyakamanekaba. Elikopala. Listen. Spend time reading Proverbs 8 from 1 to the end. As you are reading it, memorize the scripture. Speak in tongues. As you are speaking in tongues, something will jump in your head that I may cause them that love me to inherit substance. Yakapa. You know, when you are speaking in tongues, sometimes a scripture enters your head and then your, your decibel enters another level. Maybe you are going, Rabba. And then you just remember, I will cause them that possess me to, to be filled with substance. Now you move from Yakapale Kapanta Yokofanta Ilosopa Yetepe 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 Yetepe. And then while you are still on that dimension, you hear another one in your spirit by me, King's Ray Yakapata Yele Kumanana Masha Iyadebede 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 Iyadebede. 
Now you maintain that frequency for a minute. The next thing you hear, I find out knowledge of witty invention. Yeah! Kabaya! Kabaya! Yakapaska! Hey! Are you hearing me? That's how you speak in tongues. You speak in tongues by these revelations. All the while you have not said the word. Can I talk to you? In heavens, we don't open our mouth as it were. We can converse without opening our mouth. Huh? In the realm of the spirit, if I want to talk to you, I don't have to say, how are you? I will just think it. You will say, I'm fine. You say, pastor. Have you not read it? The Bible says, when Jesus heard their heart, he said to them, leave the woman alone. She has done me a great work. I'm trying to tell you, as we are speaking in tongues, scriptures are entering our spirit. And by that scripture, we move to a new realm. Are you hearing me now? He said, these things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches. The words which man's wisdom teaches is English language. Good morning, how are you? What are you doing? But rather, he says, in words which the Holy Ghost teaches. What are the words which the Holy Ghost teaches? It is when we switch from how are you to Eli Adabaha. The Venina Apratiska. We are speaking what eyes have not seen. When we speak in tongues, we are speaking what ears have not heard. Are you hearing me now? We are delving in the realms of mystery. High five your neighbor says speaking tongues. Look at this. He said, he said the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways. Oh my goodness. We could just sit here. He didn't possess me at the end of his ways. He possessed me when? Oh! Ah! May we understand this. Many of us now, it is when we have started business, we say, Lord, I don't start business. So. How far? <laughs> we have already gotten visa to travel to Europe. Say, Lord, I'm going to Europe. Oh. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> we have already said yes to Jim. Lord, Jim has proposed when I say yes so. Oh. No, sir. Tell somebody the beginning. Ah, hey, I can't wait to leave you guys. I want to go up my closet. I don't want to go far in life and realize I've not. Hey, Anama, the Bible said, Do you know, sir? You can go so far in life not knowing the Holy Ghost has not followed you. The Bible said that Mary and Joseph went three days journey, not knowing that Jesus Christ was three days behind. Three days, three days behind. The Bible said they supposed that he was among them. The worst line I have ever read in scripture is in the book of Je uh, the book of Job, uh, the book of Judges. The Bible says something did not know that the Holy Ghost backed up from him. Tell somebody, do it now. A great man of God, Rehan Bonke, he prayed a prayer. He said, Lord, let me be mindful of that which is, I forgot how he put it, but basically this scripture, let me be mindful at the beginning what matters at the end. Did you hear me? Father, let me be mindful at the beginning what matters at the end. Sir, at the end, a rose rice doesn't matter. At the end, a mansion on a hill does not matter. Hello. At the end, it doesn't matter how many zeros in your account. Father, let me mind at the beginning what matters at the end. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways. I, 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 I feel led in my spirit we must take this again next time. We can't go any further. We can't go any further. But this is the warning for those who will ignore this. Run now to verse number 35. Verse number 35. Hmm. A 
Verse 34. 34 says, Blessed is the man that heareth me and watches at my gate. Tell somebody what at his gate. Waiting. Tell somebody wait at his post. Listen to me. This job, this you must take this work seriously. You must. It can't be something you do. That is why I feel very sorry for people who don't come to Bible study. They come here on Thursday and on Friday. Everywhere jam. Everywhere jam. On Fridays. Everywhere jam. But on Tuesday, I to hear a message like this. That we help them. No, sir. Blessed are they that wait. Somebody say daily. In verse number 33, he said, who so find me? Oh, God. <laughs> he said, in verse 32, he said, who so find me? Finds what? Who so find me? Verse 35, 35. He said, who so find me? Find what? Find life and obtain what? Favor. Where do we find this kind of scripture? Who so find a wife? Find it good thing. And obtains favor. I told you at the beginning. The Holy Ghost has feminine characteristics. Who so find me. Find it a good thing. And obtains favor from the Lord. The Lord is trying to take you back to his original agenda. Why he made Eve for Adam. take questions. We'll take questions. Please ask your questions. Yes. Send your questions from online. Please touch the like button. If you are watching, touch the like button. You need to go back and listen to this message. As a matter of fact, it will help you. Just take this message. Plug your ears while you are running, doing your exercise. Whatever you are doing, you are speaking in tongues. Just, just do that. Listen to this message. It will drive you to your closet. Please take your question. Touch okay. the like button. Send your questions online. Type your name, your location. Let's know where you're watching from. Question, please. Um, I'm very glad I came in today because this has been uh, something that has been disturbing me for a very long time about the speaking in tongues. I grew up in a church where speaking in tongues was not um, was not the right thing to do. Um, my from the church that I grew up from when I was a baby to when I was about 19 years of age. They said speaking in tongues is not right. Reading from the same scripture that you read from, from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, if you go down to verse 29, it says that if one is speaking in tongues, you should be able to interpret what is being spoken. So when I started coming to Omega Fire Ministries and I got to learn more about the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, that has been a struggle with me because when I'm praying in tongues, my family members, for example, will say, you are speaking in tongues, you don't understand what you are saying, and it is biblically very wrong. So, whenever I'm speaking in tongues, I still have that thought in my mind, and it really, really bothers me. I just want you to advise me on that. Thank you. Lord, you know, this is why we must give room to question, because this is very powerful. And I'm, I'm going to sit down on this topic one day and just talk about speaking in tongues, the A to Z. One thing that you must understand when it comes to speaking in tongues is 1 Corinthians 14 and verse number 1. No man understands him. How be it in the spirit he speaks wisdom. Look verse number 2. Verse number 2. He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaketh what? Not unto man. So when I'm speaking in tongues... I'm not talking to you. So, I don't owe you, what's a nice way to say it? I don't owe you, eh? How they say it nicely, without being rude? You know, without being rude, how do you say something nicely? And you are trying to politely say, I don't care what you think. So, you must understand, 
when you speak in tongues, listen, why do we speak in tongues? Why is, did you not read? <laughs> did you not read? In the book of Matthew, don't go there, Matthew from chapter 13, from 13 all the way, he gave them over 12 parables. The Bible says at the end, he said he spoke not one word to them except by parable. Hello? Hello? Jesus Christ in his messages, he did not, everything he spoke, parable. They were confused. Why speak so much in parable? The Bible says Solomon spake 3,000 proverbs. How many? 3,000 proverbs. A proverb is a proverb. It's a parable. So when we speak in tongues, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 8, it said we are speaking what eyes have not seen. We are speaking what ears have not heard. We are delving in the realms of mysteries. Hello? So this is now deep waters. So speaking in tongues, it is not a mistake that God put it there. No, God deliberately did these things to conceal these things because it is an encrypted and, hmm, what's the word now? It, it is an enigma and it is deliberate. Do you know the death of Jesus Christ on the cross was a proverb? Am I losing you? I know your question. I'm trying to just maybe, you know, shake you up a little bit. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross was a proverb. Not even the angels understood. He has kept these things hidden. Such is speaking in tongues. Because the Bible says, had the prince of this world knew it. If they knew that killing Jesus was furthering the agenda of God, you think they would have done it? No wonder Joseph said, you meant it for evil. But God turned it. So God has encapsulated our lives in this mystery. And he has given us the key, speaking tongues. It is a channel that Satan can... Hello? When we speak in tongues... The Bible says, no man understands him. Tell somebody, no man. So that includes me too. My, my, your, your concern about speaking in tongues should not be, um, I don't know what I said. Though. No, your concern should be knowing what you are doing at the moment. Can I ask you a question? If you are offered soda and water, what do you choose? Somebody said soda. It's okay. I'm not judging you. I guess my question should be, what should you choose? You know, everybody just went silent. Please give me that OJ. <laughs> but understanding makes you choose what? Water. But if you don't care, please give me that Coke. On the rocks. <laughs> But understanding should make you choose what? Water. So now you are drinking water. It is not as sweet as Coke. Eh? But you are drinking with understanding that this is healthy. Such it is when you speak in tongues. Let understanding feel you that as I'm speaking in tongues, it is from my mouth to God's ears. Are we together? So don't let Satan mess with you. He wish you didn't speak in tongues. So that you can just spend all your one hour. In fact, you can't pray one hour in English. Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God, as we go out today, Father God, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, Father God, Father God, we just want to love you, Father God, Father God, Father God, we thank you as we go out, Father God, Father God, Father God. <laughs> By the time you are Father God for five minutes, you are tired. But sir, rather than speaking Father God for five minutes, if all you have is sir, it will do you better. Oh. <laughs> for five minutes is better than Father God for one hour. No wonder.
that Paul said? Hmm. He says, I thank my God. 1 Corinthians 14 and 18. He says, I thank my God. I speak in tongues more than you. Oh my. I want to speak in tongues. Can we close? I just want to just go somewhere. Ah, makapasa ke lamaha. I can't fail. I want to tap into counsel. Counsel. Wonderful counsel. Ah, Father, what does this mean? May we understand what this means. So, hope that helps you. Now, the reason Paul made that comment on there was because of excesses. Tell somebody excesses. Not on your part, but on the part of the man that holds the microphone. So, in those days, because the Corinthians church was a very, they enjoyed so much grace, but they were not, they were not matured. Hello? No, they were not matured. They were still sleeping around, fornicating. But yet there was so much power in their midst. Why are you quiet? First Corinthians 2 and 3. First Corinthians 3 and 1. It says, when I came to you, I couldn't speak unto you as matured. I spoke to you as babes. First Corinthians 3 and 1. It says, when I came to you, I couldn't speak unto you as what? Spiritual. But I spoke to you as what? Carnal. This word carnal means babes. I couldn't tell you zip your pants, pay your tithe, you know, be recognized. I couldn't tell you those things because you'll be offended. So I had to tell you you're under grace. You're under grace. You know, Jesus just loves you. It doesn't matter what you did last night. He just loves you. He thinks you are all that and a bag of chips. He just loves you with your smoking like a chimney self, drinking like a fish. He just loves you. It don't matter what you did. He just loves you. Oh, he just loves you. The devil is a liar. You know, some folks don't get my message, and then when they're they hearing that message, <laughs> And then the husband will now hold him. Will now, will now hold him like this. And the usher will now come to now hold him at the back. And the Holy Ghost will now catch him. <laughs> Gymnastics. I want to God they flock sinners in church every Sunday. Sin will reduce. How many of you sin this week? Line up. Usher, hold his hand. <laughs> hold his leg. What you do now? You lie? You, you lie? Tie! See, I will never lie again. I will never lie again! <laughs> Next, what did you do? Uh, Pastor, I watched pornography. You, you what? Hold his hand! Tie! How many minutes? Pastor, only five minutes. Five times ten. Tie! You flogged them 50 times. They will never sin again. But this grace thing has spread matter. Grace. It says, I couldn't talk to you as spiritual. I talk to you as karma. Even as what? Babes in Christ. The time when God expects for you to be holding your ground one hour in tongues, we are still encouraging you. Will you be in church on Tuesday? Eh, Pastor, I don't know. I will think about it. Will you forgive? Pastor, he hurts me. I don't like to forgive him. I will never forgive him. You are a babe. When you come to age, you will know your life is not your own. Your life is not your own. The life I now live, I now live, I live for him. So, although they were prophesying and speaking in tongues, they were babes, so Paul had to teach them. Because what happened is this. They just come, open the door. Yagaba, Lebros, Lebros, Shabada, Ilo, Vradia. Okay, open to the book of Lebelias. Kum Veledis Kofa. Mark chapter 4, Veledienzo, Pratitata, Kilo, Bosiana. No, no, they will not be in Kanalo. 
It was powerful. But there were those who were not able to flow in that frequency. I'm not making it up. It's there. <laughs> First Corinthians 14. The Bible says, when you bless in tongues, how can they in the auditorium say amen at that giving of thanks, even though you gave thanks very well? Why are you looking like I'm reading things all apart? <laughs> it's in your Bible, First Corinthians 14. It says, look at it, look at verse number 18. Verse number, start from verse number 13. Oh, for sake of time. Oh, no, time has gone. We have to, let's run up. Next week, we'll continue next week. <laughs> you had a question? Ooh. Okay, go. One, 30 seconds, go. There's a Alright, this is when I'm going to switch over to grace for just a minute. I won't stay too long there. Okay? We are, we are living in such an era and dispensation that the Holy Ghost, through the blood of Jesus, has turned the veil. Are you hearing me now? In the Old Testament, there was a huge veil that separated the outer court from the inner court. But when Jesus died, the Bible says the veil was torn from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, from top to bottom, which means God <laughs> ripped it. And the Holy Ghost said that was a signal that we now have access by the blood. Are we together? So we live in such an era that if you go to hell, it is your fault. He has made it so freely available. In those days, what made God live so? Eh? What made God live so? Many of you have done it <laughs> Square root, exponential, bracket times two. We have done that. But yet, he said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Okay, I'm moving very fast from grace. I'm moving away. I don't want us to dwell too much on that. Because now, if you don't understand that, you dwell too much on that. Say, so I can go now, right from here, and smoke shishi. Pastor said, he will never leave me. <laughs> No, forsake me. <laughs> and he good. <laughs> so I can go now and go to the bar and get me some, huh, some vodka on the rock and drink it and update my Instagram. Jesus turned water to wine. <laughs> so, 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 amen. I'm just saying that to say he will never leave you. He will never leave you. The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. Repent. The thing is this. Even in the New Testament, grace has limits. I will tell you the scripture that made me repent. I will close. I read a scripture in the book of Luke. Jesus said, a man, certain man had a vineyard. Tell someone a vineyard. And every year, he kept putting manure. Putting manure. You know manure? He kept putting manure on that vine so that the vine will grow. And every year, he pulls manure and yet the vine never produces. So now, upon a certain year, the owner of the vineyard said, this is the last time I will put manure on this vine. If it does not produce, I will cut it down. He put manure that year. He came back the following year, still no produce. He takes his axe to cut it down and they began to beg him, sir, please, just one more year. When I read that scripture, I repented that day. Even in the New Testament, grace has elasticity. Stand to your feet. Hold your Bible to your heart. Say, Father, I want to know you. 
Oh, come on now. Don't repeat it. Just begin to say it because you mean it. That I may know you. Holy Spirit, who are you? I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But Lord, my eyes, I want to see you. Help me to know you, sweet Holy Spirit. Help me. Help me to crave you as the deer pants for the water. Let my soul pant after thee, my Father. Tonight, Lord, I will spend time in prayer. Tonight, 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 Lord God, I will set my sleep aside to seek you. I will take one hour, one hour to seek you. Not to pray against witches or wizards, but just to say, I love you. Just to hear your counsel, my father. Oh Lord, entice my heart to pray. Entice my heart to study, to fellowship. Entice my heart to live holy and pure. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' mighty name. I speak a blessing upon your life. The Holy Ghost takes over your life. In Jesus' name. Please take up an offering. Take up an offering. Let's honor the Lord with a gift. If you are watching us online, I want you, listen to me. Those of you online, listen to me. Please, as soon as we are done with this message, come back and leave a comment. Just tell what this message did for you. The reason I wanted to do that is because through your comments and your engagement, YouTube will push this. Don't do that now. Do it after we have gone off air. Come back and leave a comment. Please do so. And then leave a like. Subscribe to the channel. And then do me one more favor. Go over to Google and leave us a five star review. Please do that. There is no gimmick to it. All of these things help us to be more prevalent on YouTube and on Google. There are people who will find us because you did that. They will come to church because you did that. Go to Google. Search Omega Fire Ministry Houston. Give us a five-star review.